In this video, we are going to look at four types of transformations. We're going to look at the translation, the reflection, the enlargement, and the rotation. So first, let's start with the uh, translation. All right, so here I have my first question where I want to say translate triangle ABC using a translation vector of 2, 5. Now, this um, 2 here is what we call the X component of the translation vector, and this 5 is the Y component of the translation vector. Now, just like how the X axis on the Cartesian plane is the horizontal axis, the X component will be a horizontal distance. All right, and the Y axis on the Cartesian plane is your vertical axis, the um, y component of a vector would be a vertical distance. Now, positive 2 means to go to the right 2 units, and this positive 5 would mean to go up 5 units. All right, so if it was negative 2, you go to the left 2 units, and if it was negative 5, you go down 5 units. So now let's do this one where we have um, the 2 units to the right and the 5 units upwards. All right, so what we do is we take each point on the shape and we translate it two units to the right and five units upwards. So let's start with the A. Going two units to the right, that's one, two, and five upwards. One, two, three, four, five. And this new coordinate here is what we call A prime, which is our image. So this A here will be the object and this A prime here will be the image. So this is the image after applying the translation vector of two, five. Now let's do the same thing for B. So for B, we're going two units to the right. So here will be one, two units to the right, and then five units upwards. One, two, three, four, five. So this point here will be the image of B. So we call that B prime. All right, and the last point to translate is C. So we're going two units to the right. So you're going to count one, two, and five upwards. One, two, three, four, five. So this point here will be the image of C, which will be C prime. And now what we do, we take our ruler and connect these three points, and that will be our image. So triangle A prime, B prime, C prime will be our image of this object triangle ABC. Now for our second question, what I'll do is I'll take the same triangle ABC as the object, and I'll use a translation vector of negative 2 and negative 5. So here I have question two, where I have the same triangle, ABC, and I'm using a translation vector of negative two and negative five. So this means the X component is negative two. So this time we are going to the left two units, and the Y component is negative five, which means we are going down five units. So starting with A, I'll be going to the left two units, so one, two, and then I'll be going five units downwards. One, two, three, four, five. So this point here would be my A prime. So going with B, I'll be going two units to the left, which will be one, two, and then five units downwards. One, two, three, four, five. So this point down here would be B prime. And now the last point would be C. So I'm going two units to the left, which is one, two, and then five units downwards. One, two, three, four, five. So this point here would be C prime. So now I'll take a ruler and connect these three points. And again, this will be your object and this will be your image. Now, going back to question one, I want to look at something here. The coordinates of A was 10 on the x-axis and 5 on the y-axis. So let's write that out. So A was 10 on the x-axis and 5 on the y-axis. Now, that's the object, right? Now, the image, A prime, right, that's 12 on the x-axis and 10 on the y-axis. So A prime was... 12 on the x-axis and 10 on the y-axis. So if I wrote this um, coordinate as a vector being 10, 5, and I add the translation vector, which is 2, 5, what would I get? I'll get 10 plus 2, all right, and 5 plus 5. 
which would be 12, 10. So you can see that if you take your object coordinates, write it as a vector, add it to the translation vector, you would get your image coordinates as a vector. See, 12, 10, 12, 10. Now let's say for some reason they give you the object and the image, and I didn't tell you what the translation vector was. All right, now you see what the translation look like, right? The orientation, the object and the image are the same. It's just like a shift, okay? So they give you the image, they give you the object. They didn't tell you what the translation vector was. Just take the coordinates of that's one point on the object. So let's go with the same A and A prime. What we could do is say, okay, we have A here, which is 10, 5, which is our object coordinates. We'll be adding it to our translation vector. Now let's use X and Y for X component and Y component of the translation vector. And that will be equal to our image coordinates, which will be 12, 10. And now I can just perform a little algebra by transferring the sum 10, 5 across the equal sign. And you will have X, Y is equal to 12, 10, take away 10, 5. And that will be equal to 12 take away 10 is 2, and 10 take away 5 is 5. And you see, you get back your translation vector to 5. So what you have here is your image coordinates take away your object coordinates gives the translation vector. So if a question ever gave you the object and the image, and the object and the image have the same shape, same size, that's the um, orientation is the same, it's just like a shift, that's a translation. You just take the object coordinates and the image coordinates and then subtract the image coordinates from the object coordinates and you'll get a translation vector. So let's try that same thing here. All right, so let's go with C. So we have um, the object C has um, coordinates. That'll be 10 here and 2 on the Y. So 10 on the X and 2 on the Y. And our image C prime would be 8 on the X right and negative 3 on the y all right so that's 8 on the x and negative 3 on the y so we write these um coordinates as um a vector okay so our translation vector and we call that x y will be equal to our image coordinates which is um 8 and negative 3 take away our object coordinates which would be 10 and 2. all right so we have 8 take away 10 so that's 8 take away 10 like this, and then negative 3 take away 2. So we have negative 3 take away 2. So 8 take away 10 is negative 2, and negative 3 take away 2 is negative 5. So you see we get back the translation vector of negative 2 and negative 5. Now just let's look again at um, adding the translation vector to the object coordinates to get the image coordinates. So let's look at B. All right, so B has the coordinates 5 and 2. All right, so B has the coordinates 5, 2. All right, so if I want to know what's B prime, my image coordinates, so let's write B as a vector. So that's B 5, 2. Let's add our translation vector, which is negative 2 and negative 5. And let's see what we get. All right, so this is 5 plus negative 2. So that's 5 plus negative 2. And then we have 2 plus negative 5, 2 plus negative 5. All right, what we'll get is five. These two, um, this plus and negative sign will give you a negative sign. So you have five, take away two. Same thing here, plus and negative, you multiply them, you get a negative sign. So you have two, take away five. And what you get is five, take away two is three, and two, take away five is negative three. Let's look at the coordinates of B prime. B prime is three on the X axis and negative three on the Y axis. So three, negative three. So let's coin it down here is three, negative three. And exactly what we get here, all right? Three, negative three. So moving on to the next transformation, which is our reflection. So the thing about a reflection is that we have a mirror line. And if this is the object, the distance between the object and the mirror line must be the same distance between the image and the mirror line. And also a line connecting the object and the image must be at right angles to the mirror line. All right, so let's go. We have, um. Reflect triangle ABC in the line X equal three. So this X equal three will be our mirror line. So we must locate that first. So look on the X axis and find three, which is here. And what we'll do, we draw a vertical line 
straight down, passing through three. And that's our mirror line for question one. All right, this is the line x equal three. So now what we do is we reflect each point individually. All right, so start with the first one, B. All right, so this is um two units away from the mirror line, then the image B prime would be also be two units away from the mirror line on this side. All right, so B prime gonna be here. And now notice the line connecting B prime and B is at right angles to the mirror line. So now do the same thing for the other points. So A, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven away from the mirror line here. So do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This will be A prime. And now C is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This will be C prime. And now you take a ruler and connect the points to form an image. Now notice my object and my image, they are the same size, um, but the orientation is sort of different, right? Because this is what we call lateral inversion. Okay, so that's the thing about a reflection. The object and the image are laterally inverted. Now let's go to the second question. Reflect triangle ABC in the line Y equal negative one. So locate negative one on the Y axis, which will be here, and we draw a horizontal line. Now the same rules apply, distance between the object and the mirror line must be the same as the image and the mirror line, and the line connecting the object and the image must be at right angles to the mirror line. So if B is here, we count one, two, three away from the mirror line, so same thing here, one, two, three. This would be, I call it B double prime. If C is here, we have one, two, three away from the mirror line, so we count one, two, three. So I call it C double prime. All right, I've seen how this um, image gonna come out, so best I put the B double prime on top here, and the C double prime on top here, and remove these. All right, and now for A, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six away from the mirror line. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and this will be A double prime. Now we'll take our ruler and connect these points and form our shape. All right, so this will be my object and this will be my image after reflection in the line, y equal negative one. And now notice if you were to draw a line connecting the object to the image, we see that that line is at 90 degrees to our mirror line. So now in this question three, we want to reflect the triangle ABC in the line y equal to x. So what is this line y is equal to x? It simply means if x is one here, then y must also be one, so that'll be this point right here. Now to draw a straight line, you need two points, right? So if x is two, then y would be two, so this be this point right here. So the line will follow this um, path like this. So I'll draw a line and demonstrate. Now this would be line y is equal to x. Now let's see what I was talking about. Here's negative three on the x-axis, and see, it's lined up with negative three on the y-axis, like here. All right, let's look at another point somewhere up here. Here is what? 12 on the x-axis, and that lines up with 12 on the y-axis. So that means y is equal to x. All right, this coordinate is 12, 12. This coordinate is negative three, negative three. Same thing here, watch, negative two, negative two. Here will be what? Negative one, negative one, zero, zero. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so forth. That's what I mean by y is equal to x. Now, things may get a little bit tricky here because this is our object, and we know that the line connecting the object and the image must be at right angles to the mirror line, so it's not so simple here now, all right? So we have to count, and we have to make sure that the line connecting the object and the image is at right angles to the mirror line. So with this y equal x, what we can use here is the diagonal, all right, so this diagonal of the box here is, is one, and this is um, a half, so that's come like one and a half. What I'll do, I'll draw some um, guidelines. All right, so this line is at 90 degrees to the mirror line. So if here's one, the diagonal are one square block, and this is um, half of the diagonal. 
then this is the um, half here and this here will be one, so the one and a half. So B prime would be here. All right, if I do the same thing to A, draw a guideline. Uh, and again, this guideline is at 90 degrees to the mirror line. All right, if we count, this will be one, two, two and a half. So we're going to have a half here, one and a half, two and a half. So this would be our A prime. And let's draw a guideline for C as well. All right, and this line is also at 90 degrees to the mirror line. So counting now, we have one, two, three, four. All right, so four away from the mirror line. So one, two, three, four. That'll be here. All right, so this will be C prime. And now we'll take our ruler and connect these three points, and that will be our image. All right, so there you have it, object and image. So if you're looking at this line here, y equal x as your mirror line, you can see that the object and image are laterally inverted. So moving on to our next transformation, which will be enlargement, we want to determine the image of triangle ABC with scale factor of 3. So this just means the image is going to be 3 times bigger than the object. Now if I had a scale factor that was a half, the image will be smaller than the object. Okay, and you'll call that a reduction. So we have the scale factor of 3 and center of enlargement 14, 1. So let's plot that point. All right, so you plot any point 14 on the x-axis and 1 on the y-axis. That's here, which will be our center of enlargement. So let's write 14 and 1. And now what we'll do is draw some light lines from the center of enlargement through each point on our object. Now, normally, you use a divider to measure these distances. But since I don't have a divider, I'll be using my compass. So I'll be placing my compass point at my center of enlargement. And let's go to our first point A. So I'll open my compass out to the distance A. And now that I have this distance here, that will be a scale factor of 1. All right, so a scale factor of 1, the object and the image would be the same thing. So now when I move the compass point at this point here, A now, and I'll just mark this point off here, that will be a scale factor of 2. All right, so scale factor of 2 means the image is going to be twice as big as the object. Then I'll place the compass point here now at that point, and measure again. And this here will be the scale factor of 3, where our image will be 3 times as big as our object. Now I'll do the same thing for the other two points. I place the compass point back at the center of enlargement, open it out to C. That'll be a scale factor of 1. Place the compass point at C now. That'll be a scale factor of 2. And then making our next arc here, that'll be a scale factor of 3. Placing my compass point back at my center of enlargement. I'll be opening out my compass now to B. All right, so that'll be a scale factor of 1. This is my compass point here. This will be a scale factor of 2. I'm placing my compass point here. I'm making another arc. That will be a scale factor of 3. So now I'm done with my compass. Now marking these points off, this point here would be A prime. All right, this line here passing through C, so this point here will be C prime. And this line here passing through B, so here would be B prime. So now I'll take a ruler and connect these three points, and that will be my image. All right, so this is my object here, and as you can see, my image is three times bigger than my object. Now, if for some reason they give you a question where they give you the image and they give you the object, and you see that the image is um same orientation as the object, but the um, size of the image is different from the object, that will suggest either enlargement if it's bigger or if the image is smaller, it'll be a reduction, all right? And you would need to find with the center of um, enlargement and the scale factor. Notice, if you draw lines connecting the corresponding points, the A prime and A, right? And you connect like um, C prime here and C, and B prime and B, and you draw those lines till they intersect, they would intersect at the center of enlargement. And then you just need to measure the distance, like from here to here, be a scale factor of one, right? Measure that same distance, that's two. Measure that same distance, that's three. So that's why you know your scale factor will be three, okay? 
Now for our fourth transformation, we have a rotation. So here we're going to rotate triangle ABC 120 degrees anti-clockwise. So we are in what's clockwise and anti-clockwise. So going this way would be anti-clockwise. And therefore going this way would be clockwise. So we're going 120 degrees anti-clockwise about the center of rotation, 0, 0. So the center of rotation is the origin, 0, 0. Now this can be any coordinate. I just choose to use the origin for this example. All right, so I'm just going to mark off our center of rotation, which is um, the origin here. And what I'll do, I'll draw some light lines from the center of rotation to all my points on my object. So this is the B, this is the A, and this is the C. And what I'll do now is get my compass. I'll place the compass point at the center of rotation. And I'm going to make some arcs. So first, let's go with um, A. So I'll open my compass out to the point A. And I'll make an arc like this. And the reason we make the arc in this direction is because we're going in an anti-clockwise direction. Okay? So I'll leave my compass there. And what I'll do, I'll get my protractor. So I'll take my protractor and I'll line up the center with the center of rotation and the zero line on the protractor would line up with this um, line in blue here. So here I have the center of the protractor on the center of rotation. So 180 degrees is on the um, inside scale here and the zero is on the outside scale here. So this line lines up with the zero on the outside scale. I'm going to go around 120 degrees. All right, I'm going to mark that spot off here like that. Parallel dot. And then we're going to draw a light line from our center of rotation straight through that um, point that we mark off as 120 degrees. Now, where this arc and this line intersect, that will be the coordinates for image. So that'll be right here. So this will be A prime. And now we're going to do the same thing for the other two points. So I'm going to take my compass. I'm going to open it out to B now. And I'm going to make an arc like this. I'm going to take the protractor, line up the center of the protractor with the center of rotation. And my zero line on the protractor with the um, line connecting to B. So that'll be the red line. And then I'm going to start with the zero here and go all the way around to 120 degrees. And that point would be here. So now I'll draw a light line from the center of rotation straight through that point. And of course, where this arc and this line intersect, that will be my B prime. Now let's do the point C. So I'll open my compass out to, from the center of rotation straight to point C. And I'll make an arc from C go all the way around like this. Right in an anti-clockwise direction. I'll take my protractor, line up the center of the protractor with the center of rotation. Line up the zero on the protractor with that line in green that's connecting to C. And then I'm going to measure 120 degrees. So starting here at zero, go all the way around to 120 degrees. And I'm going to mark that point off here with green. All right, so let's move my protractor and I'll draw a light line from the center of rotation passing through that um, point to intersect the um, arc in green. So this point here would be my C prime. So now all I have to do now is connect these three points and that would be my image. All right, so this is my object and this would be my image after a rotation of 120 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction about the center of origin, zero, zero. All right, so there you have it, your labels, object and image. So now what I wanna do is use the same object and image that I got here, and I wanna get back the center of um, rotation and also the angle of rotation. Of course, the direction as well, okay? So what I'll try and do here is erase these lines and let's leave the object and the image. All right, so this is the um, best I could clean it up. All right, so now, if a question, they give you the image and the object like this, and they ask you, well, you know, what type of transformation it is, 
Well, obviously, the, um, the orientation is different. The size is about the same, all right? And it's not laterally inverted, right? So the image is not laterally inverted from the object. So it's not a reflection. So that would suggest that it's a rotation. So now, in order to get the arm, um, well, you can see that the object is here and the image is on this side. So, you know, going this way is anti-clockwise. I mean, so that tells you the direction, okay? So what we are to determine now is the center of rotation and the angle of rotation. So what you do is connect the corresponding points. All right, so I use light lines for that. All right, so I'm going to connect B prime to B like this. And I use my um, compass. And what I'm going to do is construct the perpendicular bisector of that line connecting B prime to B. All right, so I place my compass point at B prime here. And once my compass is open out to more than half the line, you're good to go. All right, so let's make it a little smaller. Let's see, that should work. All right, so I'll make an arc like this. Then I'll place my compass point at B. And I'll make an arc like this. All right, and then I'll take my ruler and make a line connecting where these two arcs intersect. So I'll draw a light line connecting those two points. I'm going to do the same thing for another point. I don't need to do all three. I just need two points, right? So if you want to take like C prime and C. All right, so I'm going to draw a line connecting C prime and C. And I'm going to do the same thing. All right, so I place my compass point at C prime. Make sure my compass is open out to more than half the line. And I'm going to make an arc like this. Then I'm going to place my compass point at C. And I'm going to make an arc like this. All right, pretty jumble up there. And I'm going to draw a straight line connecting the points where these two arcs intersect in green. All right, I'm going to draw a light line to connect those two points. All right, so I know it's looking pretty confusing here, but the line in green is intersecting this line in red as about the origin here. All right, so that's to be our center of rotation. All right, and that's how we're going to get back the center of rotation is the origin. And now to get the angle of rotation, what you need to do is connect any two corresponding points to the center of rotation. Now what I could do is, uh, since I use C and um, B already, I'll use A. So if I draw a line connecting a prime to the center of rotation and a line connecting um, the center of rotation to A. Now I know the angle is going in an anti-clockwise direction because this is the object here and going anti-clockwise, you're going to get the image here, right? I just need to measure this angle here now. All right, so let's get your protractor, right? Line the center of the protractor up with the um, center of rotation like this. Uh, make sure the zero on the protractor is lined up with um, one of the arms at the angle there. So here, we are using the um, outside scale, right? Because that's where the zero is. And go all the way around, and you can see this line lines up exactly on 120 degrees. And that's how we know the angle of rotation is 120 degrees. The direction is anti-clockwise with the center of rotation, zero, zero. And that's it for this video.